Here's everything you need to know about NC MX-5 or Miata seats. Regardless of what country you're in, what version of the NC you have, what grade it is, if you're thinking about swapping the seats that are in it right now to something else, whether it's aftermarket, seats from another car or another NC, you need to watch this video. It's going to help you a ton. So here's everything that we're gonna cover in this video. Number one, what kind of seats did the NCs come with from the factory, depending on which grade and which model you had. We're gonna talk about factory Recaros, which were actually an option in some markets. We're gonna talk about the wiring underneath the seats, uh, so you know which wires do what. We'll talk about side airbags a little bit, about seat heaters, and about retrofitting NC2 or later seats into an earlier NC and vice versa. Here's a chart I made outlining all the different seats that came on the different models of the NC. We've split them up first into NC1 seats and what I've written as NC2+. Plus. The reason why I wrote it that way is that the NC2s and NC3s had what we can think of as the exact same seats. They had the same design, the same features, all of that. There is one very subtle difference between the NC2s and NC3s, and we will talk about that in just a moment. So on both types of seats, the earlier and later seats, the lowest trim model was the cloth seats. And they only came in one color, that's black, and they did not have seat heaters. So you can see here, um, for the NC2 and later, uh, cloth black seats. I put an X next to SH, which means no seat heaters. And I've written exactly the same thing for the NC1 versions as well. The differences between these cloth seats for the earlier vehicle and the later cloth seats is just gonna be the aesthetic. For the earlier seat, the design is such that you've got this single vertical stitch going right down the center of the backrest that extends across to the uh, the seat cushion as well but for the later model seats um, and this applies not just for the cloth but even the leather seats the stitches are arranged horizontally so you're going to have these two uh, panels on the backrest with a horizontal stitch separating them down the middle nc1 leather seats came in four colors tan was the most common one then after that you're going to find black and then less common than those would be the red seats that also had the matching red interior. And then there was like a special edition version of the car, I think it was called like the Blaze version or something like that here in Japan, that also had the white interior and it had the matching white leather seats. Then for the NC2 and later leather seats, they came in the tan, black and red color options. Um, they didn't have white, but they did have dark brown, which I think looks super classy. It's actually my favorite of all of the factory seats in terms of appearance. I think they even look better than the Recaro seats. Now, as far as I know, all leather seats had seat heaters and I've written SH. Now I have spoken to some NC Miata owners uh, who have leather seats and their leather seats don't have seat heaters. Now I'm not sure why that is the case, but at least here in Japan, um, all leather seats came with seat heaters. So we're gonna talk a little bit later about wiring under the seat and I'll talk a bit more about how you can tell for sure if your seats have seat heaters built into them or not. Because if you do have the seat heating elements in your seats and the controller for the seat heaters is, is actually built into the seats as well, if you do have them and if your car didn't originally come with seat heaters, then it might actually be super simple to add the seat heater functionality to your car, uh, which would just be a case of adding switches and a fuse. But to check whether you can do that on your car or not, I'll talk a bit more about that later. Now underneath NC1, I've written AB with a question mark in green, and that stands for airbags. I'm talking about side airbags. The side airbags on NC MX-5s and Miatas were built into the seats. They didn't have side airbags. And on the later NC1s, they did have side airbags. Over here, if you look under NC2+, Plus, I've written AB with no question mark, because as far as I know, all NC2 and later seats had side airbags built into the seats. Now, how can you tell if your seats have side airbags or not? You're just gonna look for a tiny tag. It's kind of like the, the laundry instructions tag that's sewn onto the inside of your shirt collar. And it's around about that size. It's a little gray tag that says SRS on it. If you find that tag that says SRS sewn onto the uh, backrest, usually on the side that's uh, closer to the door, then you know that 
your seat has side airbags built into it, they may not actually be functioning if your car doesn't have the wiring and circuitry to support side airbags. And that's actually the case for my NC1. I currently have factory Recaros, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. I've got factory Recaros in my NC1, which have seat airbags, side airbags built into them. But because my car didn't originally come with side airbags, it doesn't have the wiring, doesn't have the circuitry for it. Those airbags are just doing nothing. Now let's go over to the right side of this chart and let's talk a little bit about these Recaros. Factory Recaros for the NC, were only available in certain markets. They were not available in North America. They were available in Australia, the UK and Japan, and probably some other European countries. But I know they were available in these three markets for sure, because I've spoken to owners who have them. Now they're super rare because they came as standard only on some like special edition version of the NC2. Uh, here in Japan, I think it was like a, an anniversary edition or something like that. And apart from those, they were a really expensive option um, from the dealer they would cost like four or five thousand dollars a set uh, brand new and even now if you try and find them used um, they're around about two thousand dollars a pair uh, at least here in japan like you got to keep in mind that the nc mx5 or miata was meant to be a cheap fun car even for those who are buying it brand new, $5,000 just for a pair of seats is a really expensive upgrade. So not a lot of buyers went for it as an option. And also, you know, there's only the, the special edition vehicles that were sold with them as standard. So they're gonna be super hard to come by even on the used market. I mean, if you are in North America and you do want them in your car, you could definitely find them from Japan the UK and Australia, probably some other European countries, I'm not sure. If you're watching this and you're in like some other country in Europe, like Germany or something, and if you had the Recaro seats in your market, please let me know in the comments below. But if you do get, say, right-hand drive seats for your left-hand drive car, um, you're gonna bump into a few issues with wiring because the airbag sensor for the airbag warning light that's on your dashboard is only hooked up to the driver's side. Uh, same thing for the, the seat belt warning light on your dashboard. If you do get right-hand drive seats into your left-hand drive car, you're gonna have to kind of do a bit of work with the wiring to get that all working. The other thing to be aware of is what I've written down here. For the later model seats, the driver's seat had height adjustment. For the earlier seats, you only had that forward back sliding adjustment and the recliner adjustment. For the later seats, there was this third dimension of adjustment that was the seat height. So the backrest stays fixed, but just the cushion can be moved up or down. Um, so if you want a sportier driving position, you can put it all the way down. If you want better visibility when you're driving around town, you can raise the seat height. And because that adjustment is only on the driver's side, if you get a pair of right-hand drive seats and you put them in your left-hand drive car, then the height adjustment is only gonna be for the passenger and not for the driver. And when it comes to seat heaters on Recaros, uh, all of them had seat heaters, which actually makes them a really good upgrade for your regular seats. If you want to have factory fit and finish, you still want to retain the, the comfort of having seat heaters and the convenience. And that's actually why I went with them instead of going aftermarket. Now down here, I've written a little star and I've written NC3 seatbelt guides. The seatbelt guides went through an update. Um, I think it was for the NC3 because um, some NC2 seats still have the old style of seatbelt guides. All they did is basically they cut out a little, like that little plastic tab that sits in the seatbelt guide and they've made the hole wider and that allows the seatbelt to retract back more smoothly. Now it's a really simple swap because the parts themselves are identical. Uh, they're held in place with just one screw. So to swap them over, I mean, if you have a car that came with the old style seatbelt guides and you want to swap them, you just have to remove that one screw that holds them in place. Uh, with a crosshead screwdriver and then get the the newer part and I think if you order the seatbelt guide now from any Mazda dealer they're only going to have the newer part in stock and you just screw it in with the same screw and it'll fit perfectly so that's like the first upgrade I did on my car as soon as I got it hardly five minutes the parts themselves don't cost a lot so I'd highly recommend doing that if you're not going to touch anything else concerning your seats at all all right so I'm going to show you my Recaro's in my NC1, um, that's what they look like. 
So they actually look very similar to the regular NC2 seats. And uh, the only difference is they've got a bit higher bolstering on both the seat cushion and the backrest. So it, it's gonna hold you a little bit better, but it's not so high that it makes it difficult to get in and out of the car. Um, and this is the driver's side. I've just put a, an old hoodie on backwards um, just to kind of prevent uh, some of the rubbing here. Uh, it's, it's already kind of pretty bad. You can see that the leather's been worn away quite a bit. So I just wanna kind of prolong this for as long as possible before needing to get it reupholstered. Um, the material, it's uh, black leather with uh, gray artificial suede um, and it's perforated as well. So it's actually really nice in both uh, summer and winter. So very happy with these. And you can see over here, these are the uh, updated uh, seat belt guides that I've put on them. That there's work in progress. I'm doing a bit of cutting and gluing and molding to turn my regular cup holders into a much bigger storage compartment. Basically, it's like the uh, IELT Motorsports um, storage compartment, but DIY style. So I'm not, instead of buying it, I'm making it. All right, so, all right, next, uh, let's talk about the wiring. So underneath your seat, you're gonna find that there's one big white block um, with a bunch of wires going into it. And that's the electrical connector. Now on one side, there's that white block that's attached to your seat. And on the other side, it's a white block with like a bunch of wires that are feeding into uh, like underneath the carpet below the seat. So that's the vehicle side. And then we've got the seat side of this white connector. Now, if you look at the seat side, you'll notice on the back that there are a bunch of smaller connectors that are slotted into it and they're all color coded. And each of those colors are actually for a specific function uh, of the seat. And so by looking at that, you're gonna easily know what features and functions your seat has. So I've made this little table here. Um, the first connector that you're gonna find is a gray or white connector. Um, and that is gonna be for your seat belt sensor. You'll only find that on the driver's side. And that's just the input for the uh, seat belt warning light on your dashboard. The next connector you'll find is a yellow connector and that's for the side airbags that are built into the seats. If your car originally came with airbags, you'll need to make sure that the seats that you put in it also have airbags so that you can plug it all in. If you don't plug in the airbags, then the airbag warning light on your dashboard is going to come on. There is a workaround if you happen to put seats that don't have airbags into your car that originally had them. So you know, that's whether you're putting in NC seats or if you're doing going completely aftermarket with Caros, Sparkos or whatever. Um, if you put in a, a seat with no airbags and your car has the wiring for airbags, you'll need to trick the sensor into thinking that the airbag is connected. And how you do that is with a resistor. You'll just need to put a resistor into the terminals for the airbag connector. And that way it's gonna sense a resistance value and it's gonna think that the airbag is connected and your airbag warning light is not gonna come on. And then the other two connectors, the green one is for seat heaters and the blue one is also for seat heaters. But on the earlier generation, the NC1 seats, which have seat heaters in them, you'll only find the green connector. You will not see a blue one. And I'm gonna explain why that is right now. All right, let's talk about seat heaters um, on the NC1 and NC2s. On the NC1, the seat heaters only have an on-off switch, and that's because that's all they do. They either switch on or switch off. There's no adjustable heat setting. So the green connector underneath the seat for the NC1 seats with seat heaters, that green connector is just the 12 volt input. It's just your on-off input. On NC2s and later, they don't just have an on-off switch, they have adjustable heat settings. And that's just a variable resistor uh, that's stuck into that little switch on your center console. And so that resistance value ranges between 10 ohms and 1000 ohms. So 10 ohms will give you the least resistance, meaning the highest heat setting. 1000 ohms will give you the highest resistance and the lowest heat setting. 
Now, the controller for the seat heaters is built into the seats, and that controller is going to make sure that nothing gets too hot. So it's got a relay circuit which will turn off the heat circuit as soon as it hits 37 degrees Celsius. And then when it cools down a little bit, uh, it'll switch back on. That way the hottest that the seats will get is 37 degrees Celsius. Um, for the NC1s, that's kind of all the time. For the NC2s, that's gonna be on the, on the highest heat setting. If your car didn't come with seat heaters, but you wanna swap in seats that do have them, and you wanna have seated, seated heat, heated seats, what do you need to look for so that you can just add switches, add a fuse, and have your seat heaters working? So if you look underneath the seat, and this is the passenger side that we're looking at right now, you're gonna see um, a couple of wires coming out from under the carpet and going into that white connector block. And the wires that you're looking for are the green one with the red stripe and the black one with, I think it's a white or a yellow stripe. And if you have those two wires going in into the, the connector on the vehicle side, so coming out of the carpet and going into the white connector, then that means your car already has the wiring for seat heaters. And the only thing you need to do is you'll need to add switches to your center console um, and you'll need to use the switches that fit your version of the NC. So if you have an NC1, you'll need to put the NC1 switches in it. If you have an NC2 or later with the variable heat setting, you need to put those into your car. And the reason is that the uh, connector plug behind this plastic panel for the seat heaters is different for the NC1 style on off switch and the later style variable heat setting switch. So you can't swap these uh, switches over. They're not interchangeable. And then you'll need to come over here to the fuse box inside the cabin. And if you pull off the cover, you're gonna see um, where it says seat warm, one, two, three, four um, steps down. So it's the fourth one from the top. It says seat warm and it's a 20 amp fuse. So if you look here in my fuse box, it's this yellow one over here. So in that slot, um, another check you can do to make sure that that, that fuse slot is active. I've heard from some owners who have uh, NC Miatas where the wiring is not in their cars for seat heaters. When they check that fuse slot with a multimeter, there's, there's no terminals in there. Even if they look in there with a flashlight, there are no terminals. So even putting a fuse in there isn't gonna do anything. So those are the things you wanna check. Check if this slot in your fuse box is active. Check if you have the connectors for the switches behind your center console. And check if you've got the wires coming out from under your carpet uh, that are for the seat heater. The green one with a red stripe and the black one with a white or yellow stripe that goes right next to it. Now, let's talk about what you need to know when putting your NC2 or later seats into an NC1. Now, the bolt patterns and the threads and the bolts for all of the seats in all of the NCs are exactly the same. So any seat from any NC will bolt into any NC. What you'll need to keep in mind is the wiring and the additional functions and making sure all of those work. So for example, if you put NC2 or later seats into an NC1 and you want the seat heaters to work, remember that NC2 and later seats have two inputs. They've got the resistance input and the on-off input. So I'm going to show you what I did in my car where I put factory Recaros into my NC1 and my NC1 only has an on-off switch for the seat heating. Step one, uh, with the seat out of the car, you're going to have to get the blue connector out of the larger white connector that's on the seat. Uh, and to do that, you're just going to pry the, the retaining tab with a flat, with a small flathead screwdriver and use like a, like a flat tipped punch to push the blue connector out uh, of the white larger connector. Once it's out, uh, what I did is I used some zip ties to fasten the resistor, the 10 ohm resistor onto the front of my seat. So that's not gonna hit the floor or anything. It's gonna maybe wobble a little bit, but I think that's fine where it is. It's not gonna slide around. The, the distance from the terminals to that other terminal is not gonna change too much. And these uh, zip ties on the sides here are what I've used to anchor it in place. Next, you can see in this blue connector, there are those uh, pin connectors. And what you're gonna need is some female 
wire terminals uh, that are that size, the flat type ones, that will slide right over those pins. So we're going to get some wiring and uh, a crimp tool and we're going to attach those terminals on. And for this end, you're just going to need that ring type terminal to slide on and use the other nut that uh, came with these uh, to hold them in place. Alright, so I've got the first one on there and I've threaded it through the zip ties just to make sure it doesn't wobble around or get caught on anything. And I've connected it into one of the terminals on the uh, blue plug. You don't have to worry about polarity because it's just a resistor. Um, you can plug them into either one. Uh, I just use red and black uh, to know which one the long one is and which one the short one is. So I've got this other one made up and I've made sure I didn't forget the insulation sleeves on the ends. And now I'm just going to plug this into uh, the other pin on the blue connector and slip this over the other terminal on the resistor and tighten up the nut and we're all good to bolt this back into the car. And you're done. You just got to take the seat, bolt it back into your car. On off switch on the NC1 is going to work just fine. If you happen to have an NC1 and you're swapping NC2 or NC3 seats into it and you want to have seat heaters working, uh, this is how you're going to do it. If you do want to have the variable heat settings, then instead of a fixed 10 ohm resistor, you can use a variable resistor. What if you're putting an NC1 seat into an NC2 or NC3? The adjustable heat settings are not going to work. Um, instead, you'll even, like whenever you have the seat heating turned on, uh, regardless of what the heat setting is on the switch, you're going to have it on the max setting um, because the NC1 seat heater controller only takes in one input, which is just, do we have 12 volts of electricity coming in? And if we do, we're going to switch on the heat. Hope you found that useful. If you want to see more videos about modding your NC MX-5 or Miata, uh, subscribe and uh, you'll see more useful videos like this. Catch you soon. Bye.